Friends and lovers, welcome to the gym impressions for Super Mario Odyssey. As one donk falls, another donk. I'm sorry, I can't get over the fact that the that there's a level in this game called New Donk City, which uh, I don't have any footage of today, but uh, I may do another gym impressions of this. I feel like this channel will be incomplete without some footage from New Donk City. But right now we're in the desert and there's some ice in the desert because of those no good bad people who do bad things. So that's why Mario is there with his hat that's got eyes that he uses to possess things and take over their souls and enslave them like their orcs in Shadow of Mordor. Anyway, you'll notice that I'm 2D here. This is a thing the game likes to do a lot. Um, I also noticed, I think I saw something flashing there that I might have to go back and get. So one thing about this game is when I've gone back and looked over the footage that I've captured, I see little sparkly things that indicate there might be a moon somewhere or, or some of the secret currency somewhere. I'll talk about currency in a moment. Um, the game is just full of these moons that you collect, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And some of them, like in Mario 64, you got, you know, big, clear dedicated tasks to get them. And some of them are just hanging around. If you see something sparkling in the ground, you know, maybe slam your ass into it, as Mario loves to do. I don't know how he hasn't got the worst hemorrhoids in the world. Actually, maybe he does. Maybe that's why he goes Ooh, all the time. You don't know. But anyway, um, just slam your ass into the ground and maybe a moon will pop out. I mean, that's a sentence. So anyway, Here's Mario wearing different clothes, and here's something that's going to shock you. The outfits that you can get for Mario, guess what? You just get them in the game. You don't buy them. They're not, nah, that was stupid. You don't, like, unlock them with a premium currency. There is a different type of currency. You get your gold coins here, which actually have something of a use in this game, beyond, you know, getting one-ups and shit. Um, and then you get these purple ones, which are different on every map you get to. And you can only spend them on that map on certain, you know, level-specific items, including costumes. When I saw two currencies at first, like, my... That was awful. My eyes bugged out. I was just like, oh my god, do not tell me you've put multiple currencies in this thing. But it turns out the second currency is in-game collectibles. You get in-game collectibles, and the costumes are pretty affordable. So you don't have to go find every single one. If you want every single level-specific item, you do need to find every single level-specific bit of currency. But that's not a major concern, because the, the really important stuff is it's easily achievable. And that's one thing I like about the game. Uh, general impressions of the game, of course. I'm very gym-pressed. Uh, it is great to play a Mario that is like this again. Uh, you know, it's got that Mario 64, not quite an open world, but open level feel. Just full of things to explore and secrets to find, and as I say, just hundreds of moons to collect. And it's not just going after Bowser, that, that fucking Bowser! Oh, what are we gonna do? Uh, you know, it's rounding up sheep for this uh, Day of the Dead skeleton, I guess. I guess that's what they are. Um, every level, of course, has its own unique inhabitant, and uh, they're all very uh, uh, charismatic. There's a lot of character going on in this game. Uh, and there's a sheep, a sheep with a sombrero on, because why not? And here's one of these normal-looking humans, which just freak me out. It's still weird, no matter how much I've played this, and I've, I've played a fair bit of it now, it's just weird to have normal humans bipeds next to Mario, who must be a different species of something. But anyway, as the case in point, as I was saying earlier, just thrust your anus into the sand, and then you get a moon. So, <laughs> so that's good. And that's really the lesson that I think Mario as a series has always been there to teach us, is that if you thrust your anus into the sand, you may get a moon. And, I mean, they're not really moons, are they? Because a moon is a is spherical. And you appear crescent-shaped because of lighting. So, the, honestly, they just look like badly coloured bananas. Especially if you beat a boss and you get them in a bunch. It's like a bunch of bananas. Anyway, here's one of the sub-bosses. The Rabbit Gang, I guess. Maybe left over from Kingdom Battle, you know, infuriated. 
by their, I don't know why I decided to do that, infuriated by their loss. Uh, some rabbits turned really bad and, and basically just did this, you know, launching fire bombs and everything. An all out war. That's what it's gone from, from harmless strategic combat fun to all-out war. Anyway, let's actually talk about the game instead of some bollocks. All the footage captured here has been done using the split controller method, where you take each Joy-Con, take each Joy-Con in a separate hand and they're not attached to anything. So you're freehanding it. And that's the recommended way to play it according to Nintendo. Now, we all know what it means when Nintendo says something's recommended. What they mean is, this is how you play it. You can play it in other methods, but fuck you if you do. Now, using the waggle, the motion control stuff, is simply easier. Look, miles, a bunch of bananas, see? Miles easier with a Joy-Con in each hand. I've tried playing it with them, even attached to the, you know, the central spigot. That's not the right word at all, but I like the word spigot, so we go in with it. The central spigot. I've tried it with that, and the motion control just behaves differently when you don't have them in each hand. Uh, I haven't tried it in handheld yet. I'm, I'm going to try it, but, ugh, you know, maybe we'll give some updated impressions after I've done that as well. And I'm not looking forward to it, if I'm honest. Um, some of the waggle in this especially, and we're going to keep calling it waggle, I don't care if it's an outdated term, it's what it is when they make you do it. Um, a lot of it actually does feel pretty decent. They keep it subtle for the most part, which I like, the motion control. I like it when it's there to enhance a game, not when an entire game's been built to try and justify its existence. And for the most part, that's what this is, you know, if you want to throw the hat at something, just flick your wrist. And if you want it to home in on something, flick it again. Now, that's the tricky part, because playing it that way, you kind of can get very, very used to using the waggle to home in on something. And I'm not looking forward to trying it with a control scheme where that's gone. I'm worried I've become a little reliant on it now. But anyway, I'm in a tank now. Uh, you can possess most things as you know trailers and that have shown and it's hilarious every time um, if you can imagine something being possessed chances are good you can do it unless they're protected with a hat of course and there have just been moments in this game that have utterly delighted me like you know possessing goombas and then stacking them one on top of the other to get to places uh, this this game is full of moments where it's like you know this might just be crazy enough to work and lo and behold, it works. And stacking the Goombas is a fantastic one. Uh, there was a whole level with one of those, you know, a flying Goomba with the wings and that. And th that whole little mini level was just brilliant. Uh, there are so many clever twists and, you know, p environmental puzzles, I guess we call them. Uh, the, I, I mean, I'm just, I'll be honest with you right now. Uh, aside from the fact that Nintendo had to be Nintendo and it didn't so much force a control scheme as try and sort of railroad you into one particular control scheme. This might be my favorite Mario game I've played, at least thus far. Uh, certainly the best one I've played in years. And you can, you can take that to the bank. Uh, the best Mario game I've played in many, many years. And you can ride what looks like a stone statue of a lion, some something. Um, I'm not up on my mythology, but you can ride that around and collect musical notes and get a moon. And this game is brilliant. It is clever, it is fun. It's Mario. Donk. <laughs>